Hello and welcome everyone to the True Bethel Worship Experience. Whether you're a longtime member or a first time visitor, we are happy to have you here with us today. We hope that you'll feel right at home and enjoy the service. If you have any questions or need any assistance during your visit, please do not hesitate to ask one of our friendly greeters or ushers. Thank you for joining us, and we please ask that you silence your cell phones, reduce your conversation, and direct your attention to the screen for your Sunday morning announcements. Have a great worship experience. It's Donate Life Month. As a transplant surgeon, I have seen how kidney donation has changed people's lives immensely. They get off dialysis, they get energy levels back, they're able to go back to work, they're able to live full lives and spend time with their family. And donating is an amazing gift. You can donate a kidney while you're alive, by calling the transplant center, or you can sign your driver's license and donate after you've passed away. Either way, donating is a great opportunity to really help somebody get their life back. Good morning and welcome to the True Bethel Worship Experience, where we are one church in three locations. We hope that you can join us at our 907 East Ferry location, downtown location, or Niagara Falls location, or you can watch live on Facebook or on YouTube. If this is your first time worshiping with TBBC, we want to thank you for joining us. We hope to see you again. Hour of Power is the place to be every Thursday night at our 907 East Ferry Campus at 7 p.m. We are at Hour of Power for Bible Study. Come on out, even bring a friend. Let's grow together in the Word. Bible Academy is sponsoring a financial wellness seminar that will take place at our 907 East Ferry Campus on April 20th at 11 a.m. During this seminar, you will gain so much information on the topic of finances. Come on out. 48 Hours of Prayer is back, and it is taking place at our 907 East Ferry Campus on May 1st through the 3rd. Three morning services at 6 a.m., two midday services at 12 noon, and two night services at 7 p.m. Be on the lookout for more information, but prepare your hearts and minds for prayer. TBBC is publishing a Mother's Day book, 100 Lessons That Our Mother Has Taught Us. If you can, please submit a three to five sentence paragraph of the most important lesson that your mother has taught you. With that paragraph, you can also submit a picture of you and your mother. We look forward to hearing from you. Chubetha will be traveling to Ghana in October. There is still time to sign up and to attend this wonderful trip. If you would like more information, stop by the core desk and you can pick up the information packet. There are many ways to participate in the worship of giving. You can give in person at a service that you attend, or you can give online at www.truebethel.com or on Cash App, dollar sign True Bethel, or on the Realm app, and you can select the giving tab. Once again, we want to thank you for worshiping with us. We want to also thank you for watching live on Facebook or on YouTube, or even if you tune in on the radio. Let's prepare our hearts and minds for the worship experience. Good morning, morning True Bethel, family, family and friends. Welcome, Welcome to the worship experience. May you please stand for the reading of God's holy word. Today's scripture is coming from Galatians 3, 12 and 15, New Living Translation. Since God chose you to be the holy people he loved, you must clothe yourself with tender heart and mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each and other faults and forgive anyone who has offended you. Remember, 
The Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothing yourself with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let us have the peace that comes from Christ ruling in your heart. For as members of the body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. And the word of the Lord is blessed. So, so God, as we're coming, coming hallelujah, as we come out, hallelujah, this morning to give you praise, to give you glory, to give you honor. We're thankful, oh God, for what, you, what you've done for us. We're thankful, oh God, that you woke us up this morning. We're thankful, oh God, that you started us on our way. We're thankful, oh God, hallelujah, for how you put clothes us. Hallelujah, for how you moved us. Father, have your way, oh God, as we, oh God, align ourselves, hallelujah, to your word. Father, increase us, oh God. In the name of Jesus. And for this will ever be forever blessed. Forever, oh God, we will stand and give you glory. For this, oh God, we say amen. And this is, hallelujah, your call to worship. Hallelujah. Good morning, True Bethel, and praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, I hear you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, will you just look at your neighbor real quick and just say, neighbor, I serve a mighty God. And today, I make a vow to give a mighty praise. Now, if you agree with what you just said, will you stand on your feet and clap your hands and give your mighty God some mighty praise? Come on, look at him and tell him, Lord, you're mighty. Come on, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Let's go. Come on, while you're standing on your feet, put your hands together like this. Come on. Come on, I don't see y'all clapping. Everybody clapping right.
things that he brought me to My stormy days and my rainy days You don't know all the tears I've cried The things I've kept bottled up inside Trying my best to be strong Waiting on God and holding on You don't know what I had to endure And you wonder why I'm so sure Cause my father never lets me down
you do know you are sitting on the road with somebody that if they looked like what they've been through, You're sitting on the road with somebody right now who they just don't look like what they've been through and you just don't know what somebody else is experiencing in their life right now. About 20 of you make suffering look easy. Make sickness look like health. But aren't you glad that he doesn't leave you by yourself? And that he's always with you. Matter of fact, I just need 10 of you to release a praise in here that what you've been through didn't take you out. Same for everybody, but I need the ones who you got to praise because he's kept you. Now, if you sit next to a friend, they know what you've been through but they don't know the whole story. They don't know the whole story. But there's somebody on the other side of you that you can just let them know you don't know my whole story. But I want you to know that God kept me. They don't know about every tear. They don't know about every fear. But would you let them know he kept you? Would you let somebody know he kept me? I'm moving on with the announcements. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to walk with Jesus. I've learned to walk with God. Anybody know through it all? I move into the announcements, but I got an altar full of people. So I guess I better deal with the altar right quick because there's probably about 30 more that want to come and bow down. I dare you to just get out of your seat and move to the front real quick so that I can move on and do what I got to do. There might be 30 more of you who you don't know my story. But oh, he's been good, he's been God. Got to know how to read the spirit and the move of God. Got to know how to sense it, got to know how to sense it. Just call the name. Demons tremble at the name. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. So I want to just fill this house for about three minutes with the name. Can it flow out of your mouth? Can you take me to prayer lines? I know I'm going into radio time, but take me to prayer lines. Musicians, I want you to bring it down as low as you can. There it is. Somebody's calling the name.
Will you be the prayer warrior on your roll? There it is. That powerful name. That powerful name. Jesus. My rock and my shield, Jesus. Healer, Jesus. Heart regulator, Jesus. Mind fixer, Jesus. Mother when I'm motherless, Jesus. Father when I'm fatherless, Jesus. The lifter of my soul, Jesus. My savior, my protector, Jesus. 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 There is something. Come on, don't stop, don't stop. I know many of you are tuning in right now. We're just calling on his name. That, that's our call today. When you don't know what to say, call the name. When you don't know how to respond, call the name. When you need direction, call the name. When you there it is, there it is. I need some bold prayer warriors in here right now. There it is, there it is, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Come on, from the back to the front. The name will change the hearts of men. We, we, we're gonna move on in just a second. Somebody's, somebody's getting just, just what, what they, they need, need right, right now. Go ahead, Oregon. Go ahead. Go ahead. His house should be called a house of prayer. House of prayer. House of prayer. shall be called a house of prayer. Those of you who are listening by radio, just call the name. That's what we're doing right now. All in your living room, call the name. In your car, call the name. On your job, call the name. I want you to, I, I, I want, I, I want you to see where you need Jesus to operate in your life right now. Call his name and see the place. Call his name and see the place. Call his name and see the place. Call his name and see the sickness. Call his name and see the situation. Call his name. Because a few of you are praying not for yourself. You're praying for somebody else. Call his name and see the person right now. When you can't get to him, he can. When visiting hours are over, he can still walk through hospitals. When minds seem totally messed up, he's still able to turn minds and hearts around. He's already where you're trying to get to. Now, we, I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on. But I just want to end this prayer. I want to end this calling of his name. 
with us loudly one last time calling his name. Will you call it? Now clap your hands and believe that he's able to do all things but fail. Come on, clap your hands wherever you're at. Open up your mouth and give him praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Bring me the pulpit, please. In Jesus' name. Just sing a little bit, if y'all know that, just Jesus. Whatever, whatever with the name of Jesus, and I'm going. There is something about Somebody would have a Holy Ghost fit right now who loves the Lord. For some reason, I'm over in I'm over in New Zion Baptist Church when I was a little boy with my grandmother. And I just remember one person being in the road. I'm talking about the old New Zion before they built the new New Zion. And there was a woman in there, she just read just had a Holy Ghost fit, shaking the hat off of her head. I just need about two people. If you will just have a Holy Ghost fit and give something about that name. Tell your name is 
excuse me. God's been too good to me to sit here like I don't know him. I ain't having a seizure. I'm just having a Holy Ghost fit. the scholars out there. I'm cutting half of what I was going to talk about in half, but for you scholars, I'm just going to go to the point. I know it's going to seem out of calendar order. But I'm just going to cut across the field. Where I'm going to start is really where I was supposed to end. Luke 23, 44. You can, you can get the long play version from 8.30. If y'all gonna praise him, will you just go ahead and praise him and stop playing?
I know the scripture I'm getting ready to give you goes back to Good Friday. The text was really supposed to come from 24, but let me operate in the moment. I should have ended with 23, because I was going to tell you how Jesus showed up after he rose. But for your service, So those who are listening go, well, he should have preached that. Good Friday. It's still Good Friday. I just don't, I'm just going right to the point because y'all already. Luke 23, 44 says, by this time it was about noon and darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. The light from the sun was gone. Suddenly the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in the middle. Then Jesus shouted, Father, I entrust my spirit into your hands. With those words, he breathed his last breath. I was really supposed to be in chapter 24, but for y'all, just for y'all. I just want to talk about the total eclipse. Y'all can be seated. I'm just going to talk. That's why I got my chair. Let's go talk. Let, let me go right to the point. An eclipse occurs when things in the heavenlies are perfectly lined up. An eclipse that we experience occurs when the earth and the moon and the sun are in perfect alignment. A few days ago in this region, we experienced something called a total eclipse. 
But what I learned is for a few minutes, three minutes, it seemed like it was night. But it was actually still day. What occurred was there was a shadow that happened in our region that made it seem like it was night. Yea, though I walk. The shadow of death I will fear. Come on, talk to me, no evil. When the eclipse occurred, there's alignment. I'm moving, I only have 10 minutes, but excuse me for going backwards, but I had to for this moment. Because there's somebody who thinks it's night, but it's actually day. I just need you to get chair number one because I need you to know it's not night. You're just living in a shadow right now. It may seem strange that it appears to be night, but if you can make it through the night, weeping may endure for a night, but I need somebody to help me preach and tell everybody down your road what's going to happen in the morning, but joy is coming in the morning. If I had read what I was supposed to read, what I wanted to read, I ain't even going to say supposed to read, I would have told you how Jesus showed up to the men of Emmaus as they are telling everybody that they met Jesus. They met, they met him and something occurred in their life. I, I come to talk because unless you have had an eclipse moment in your life, in which it's not that it was dark, it's when it got dark. What's amazing when you have an eclipse moment in your life, uh, it happens at a time that's not normal. Let me do it again. Because the Bible says when Jesus is on the cross, it's noontime. That means it's daylight. And darkness fell across the whole land at 3 o'clock, until 3 o'clock. It starts at noon, goes to 3, 3 hours, 12, 1, 2, 3, 3 hours. He was going to be in the grave 3 days. Darkness comes for 3 hours. We went through darkness a few days ago for 3 minutes. The light, according to Luke, from the sun was gone. When the eclipse happened, something started changing. And I'm not talking about your zodiac sign. Uh, be careful, and I don't have time to go through it right now, but be careful about worshiping the moon. The Bible lets us know that that's not of God. The Bible says that when the darkness came, that the veil in the temple was rent. In other words, there was now a new relationship with God and man that did not need the intervention of somebody else. Can I help somebody? Because when you have an eclipse moment, that's when things are occurring in your life that make it seem like it's dark, but it's actually still day. But God is lining up some things for you. I don't know which other two people needed to get up here, but I come to tell you God is lining up some things perfectly in your life and if you learn how to trust them, am I talking to somebody? Because the Bible says that the veil in the temple is rent when the eclipse happened in Luke. When Luke describes the eclipse, that the eclipse moment when Jesus now uh, gets ready to die, he is hanging on the cross and it gets dark. I 
I come to tell somebody there are going to be some dark days in your life, some eclipse moments, but I come to tell you if you trust God, you're going to find out that the sun will shine again because it never stops shining in the first place. You were living in some shadows and it seemed dark. I don't know who I'm talking to. I'm sorry for having to uh, uh, abbreviate this message, but it's for somebody to get it right now. Your darkness is really just a moment, but notice that most of us, when it got dark, some people were clapping, some people were quiet, but you knew that you were in a moment that was like none other. Can I talk to somebody right now? Because you know you are in the eclipse moment when you go from real healthy to real sick. Who am I talking to? You know you in an eclipse moment when you go from suddenly uh, being, being, being happy to suddenly being sad, from laughter to mourning, from good health to poor health, from finances right to finances tight when you know you in an eclipse moment when out of nowhere but I came to tell you you can't see the sun when you can't see the brightness when it seems like it's night of a night that's your eclipse moment Somebody's not only going through an eclipse moment, somebody under the sound of my voice is going through an eclipse season. Uh, do I got a chair for you? Do I have a chair for you? Seems like, seems like the more you try to see the sun, and I'm not talking about the S-U-N, I'm talking about the S-O-N, and if you don't believe that the S-O-N and the S-U-N have anything to do with each other, let me cut across the field. I come to tell you that they do have something to do with each other, because at the end of the day, in the Bible, in the Bible, the day that the psalmist says, God is our son, and so Psalms 84 and 11, you can read it. And when he says, God is our son, he says, S-U-N. Malachi says, but for you who fear my name, the son of righteousness will rise, and he uses S-U-N. The sun in the sky represents the majesty and the power and the glory of God. The earth represents man and all our humanity, but there's something in the middle called the moon, and God gave us the moon so that the moon would govern the night and that the sun would govern the day. But when he brings forth both of them together on the earth, what occurs is that there is a mighty manifestation of God that he lets you know, I control the sun and the moon, but I also control the earth. And when you understand God as a God who controls the sun and the moon and the earth, you stop worrying about what God is up to and you begin to say to God, if I gotta go through darkness for a moment, what I do know is you are lining up something on my behalf, and I got somebody right now that I'm gonna shut up, somebody right now who has been praying to God, and it seems more dark than it is light, I need you to jump up and just think of God, I believe you're lining up something perfectly in my life. God knows the earth, God knows the moon, and God knows the sun. But here's the good part. I wish I could preach the whole thing for you. God knows you. And so he knows how to move things. Ah, let me do it again. Let me do it again. He knows how to move things to line up with what, what you need. How do you know it? Because the Bible told me that. All things work together for the good, for them that love God, to them which are called according to his purpose. I wish you were sitting next to somebody, but you ain't got to talk to your neighbor. Talk to yourself for this one moment. Have that self-reflection and just tell yourself it's working for my good. No, don't, don't whisper it. Say it out loud. It's working for my good. God, I don't know why you allow things to move around me like you do, but all I know is if I trust you and I believe you, it's working 
working for my good. It might not look like it's light outside, but I came to tell you it's working for your good. And there are times you need to be in darkness so that you can appreciate his glorious light. Where are my people right now that the reason you praise him like you do because you've been in darkness and you're thankful for the light. You, you're thankful that he allows his light to shine on you. Uh, you, ain't, you, you, you. You might go through darkness for a moment, uh, but as long as I know the sun is still shining, uh, even when I can't see you, Lord, I trust you uh, because as you keep on moving, I ain't mean to preach like this. I got to go through Bethel, uh, but I came to tell you there's a total eclipse uh, that will happen in your life. Uh, but I come to testify uh, that if you hold on uh, to God's unchanging hands, uh, is there anybody here right now uh, who will be a witness uh, that if you hold on, uh, that God will uh, shine his face on you? Uh, they used to sing a song that says, shine on me. Let your light from your lighthouse, uh, let it shine on me. I got some witnesses here right now uh, that will tell you they've been sick, uh, but the sun kept on shining. They've been down, but the sun kept on shining. They've been confused, but the sun kept on shining. And I need somebody who will jump to your feet and give God praise that when it seems like it's night, it's still day. I need somebody that's got a praise that doesn't mind letting everybody on your road know he shined on me he shined on me he shined on me I believe God will shine when there is eclipse Know that things are still moving. Play softly. I'm, I'm going. They are still. God is still moving. He's still working on your behalf. He's still operating in the heavens. All of the theories, what the eclipse meant, comes to your sign. I got a different sign for you. He died. He rose. He saves. He forgives. He guides. He heals because of the blood. God controls the moon. God controls the sun. God controls the earth. For those three people real quick and we're gone. If you've been feeling in darkness for a while. I gotta move, I gotta get to the other church. The ones who I can't let you leave here as dark as you've been feeling. If one of you is young, the other is old. I need you to come here right now because God's about to show you how he can shine on you. I need you to come here right now.
prayer lights and then we'll take the offering and go home. Come on. This darkness will not overtake you. This darkness will not control your life. But the same way when it went dark, he was on the cross. It opened up a new relationship, a new level of relationship with God. Some of you are going to go closer to God because of your eclipse. Some of you will just count it as this is just coincidence. I don't believe in coincidence. I believe in divine timing. So that young brother that needs to walk, walk right now. 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 Because God's about to show you what he can do with you. You're, it's not nighttime. It's just a shadow over you. It's just a shadow. I need you to walk, sir, because when you walk, others are going to walk. When you walk, others are going to walk. When you walk, I speak it in the name of Jesus. When you walk, others are going to walk. When you walk, others are going to walk. When you walk, others are going to walk. Come on, come on, come on. It'll be all over in the morning. Somebody clap your hands when they walk. Somebody clap your hands when they walk. Father, we come now thanking you for the ability and the wisdom to recognize when we are walking in darkness. Thank you, God, that at times we, we haven't even felt like ourselves. There, there were times where we felt all discombobulated, out of whack, out of joint. Seemed like Monday wasn't mixing with Tuesday, and Tuesday, sure enough, wasn't mixing with Wednesday. Thursday wasn't even a part of the equation. But God, we are so thankful that you are so strategic that you would allow us to come in one place to hear one sound, and everything would change just like that. So God, we are thank you that as long as we have found ourselves in some dark places, you promised us that you were the light, for you said that you came that you would be the light of the world. God, we declare now that our better days are not ahead of us. Better days are not coming. We declare and we decree that we are living in our best days right now. For greater is he that is in us than anything that may rise up against us in the world. So God, we are thankful that others may have called us, others may have pushed us, but in this moment right now, as the psalmist said, sometimes we've gotta be willing to encourage ourselves. So in this moment, God, we thank you on our own behalf for greater work shall we do. We thank you right now now that we are operating in the fullness thereof. God, now as we close out this moment of corporate prayer, pray that you would allow a selfish moment. The songwriter said, let the light from your lighthouse shine on me. So God, would you allow your light to shine on each of us individually right this moment, right this second. And what I learned in science class that when there are moments of light, there becomes a ray. So God, if we all got your light shining on us, there's a ray shining all over. I wonder, is there anybody in the house today that can thank God for his light that's shining on your neighbor? Can I know if he's shining on you? He's shining on me. I dare somebody just to open up your mouth and say thank you God for shining on me thank you God for shining on my brother thank you God for shining on my sister and what God has joined together let no man put asunder in Jesus name in Jesus name amen amen and amen listen we're getting ready to go 
know, but if you don't know the Lord today in the pardon of your sins and in the relationship with him, and if you do, but you just want to want to make sure that you are safe in his hands, I want you to pray this prayer. Dear Lord, I'm sorry for what I have done to you, to myself, to my fellow man. Forgive me. I repent. I change my mind. I believe in your son Jesus that he died and he rose for me. Come into my life. Save me today. Fill me with your spirit. Thank you God for another chance. In Jesus name. Amen and amen. You can go back to your seat but go back letting him shine on you. Go back. Letting him shine on you. Trustees are coming. I'm going to dismiss you just a second. What a, what a mighty God. Seven o'clock, y'all mess up my whole sermon. especially hates this one, you saw young people walking up to the altar. Some of y'all mean and old people ain't never going to change. But if we can get to the generation that is coming behind us and that is here right now, the enemy hates that. The enemy hates that we feed hundreds of people put clothes on people's back. The enemy hates that we build housing. He hates it. He hates it. He hates it that on a Sunday morning you get up and get dressed or tune in. He hates this church. He hates it so much that some of you are scared to say where you belong because he hates it. He hates that God could take a little short balding, not bald, not bald. I do have some preaching. Doesn't deserve his grace and use him. And he hates you because you stay strong. You keep doing the work. But don't worry about it because I got a scripture for you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. <laughs> Renee gonna preach in a minute. She gonna... you, you, you you wanna finish that scripture? Go ahead. No weapon formed against you. electronically, will you do that right now? Father, thank you for this day. 
Thank you for what we're about to give. It belongs to you. We didn't even have to have this, but release it to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Follow the direction of the ushers. We'll see you Thursday night, Lord willing, and the creed don't rise.